Hello, welcome to the Thrifted Dragon. Uh, this is my first YouTube video making crafts and I want to really showcase crafts that people can make um, from things that they get from the Dollar Tree or a thrift store and uh, hopefully easy to follow along. Um, you can make it your own. You can use your own mediums. You don't have to use the things that I used, but hopefully it'll give you some inspiration with things that you can do um, at home to help decorate for the holidays or help just occupy yourself, your, your kids, your time, your, um, your crafting pleasure. So this is what we're going to be working on with this project. I, uh, I love fall and I love pumpkins. Anybody that knows me knows that I love pumpkin soup, pumpkin pie, pumpkin smoothies. I could go Bubba Gump on that all day. Pumpkin everything. So one of the things that I've really been dreaming of making is little pumpkin headed dolls. So this is one of the <laughs> pumpkin headed dolls I made. This one's not finished yet, um, but the head is finished. The dress I'm working on, the shoes I'm working on, but the head is finished. And I want to show you that. So we will be making heads like this. I'm going to show you a basic head that you can make without any clay. This is model magic on this one and you can make this too if you wanted if you wanted to. I hope that you want to because it's fun. Isn't it cute? All right. See ya. You'll need some pumpkins. This one's from Hobby Lobby. Dollar Store. Dollar General. And Model Magic from Walmart, but you can also find that at Dollar General. Exacto Blades, that was from Dollar Tree. And this pumpkin was from a thrift store. That one's from uh, Dollar Tree. Wherever you find them, this one's from Dollar General. And this was from Hobby Lobby. They have really pretty pumpkins. We're going to start off by uh, removing this one had flowers on it. This one was from Dollar Tree and we'll take the flowers off and start marking in where we want our face. I just used a marker for this. But that marker will not come off if you want it off. So you're going to have to paint over that if you decide to change your mind. Use your X-Acto blade and go along those lines real gently. Just press. You really just want to use pressure and just try to press that as you cut. Not use a don't use a jaggedy um, hand just press it gently remove it take it back put it back in take it back out and uh, when you're done completely I want line by line with this then just pop out those little pieces that way you don't rip the the pumpkin veneer on that if you do you can paint over it but um, here we're just gonna paint inside those eyes and that mouth I'm gonna use a flat black that's um, just a regular apple barrel paint from Walmart. You can use any kind of acrylic paint. And um, keep a little um, paper towel next to you so you can wipe up any messes. That makes a real nice effect there. At the end I found some leaves off a floral arrangement that I had and I am going to glue those in there. At first I thought it would be cute to have two that looked like a little antenna but then I realized it kind of looked like rabbit ears and I wasn't going for that look so we take the leaf off the one I left the leaf on the stem and BAM I was happy with that that's the first head kind of a uh, you know goofing around seeing how that looks you put on there whatever you want you want a flower back on there don't take it off leave it on or you can put some little vines on there, that would be cute too. So for that I removed the stem so it would lay down flat when I glued it. And 
and I'm using Fabri-Tac glue. You can use Elmer's glue. It takes a little longer to dry, but I think glue will work. Fabri-Tac is one of my favorite kinds of glue. It holds quick and it's easy to use. And then when you get that stem in there or flower or whatever you decide to put in there, just set it aside to dry. I was working on multiple projects at this time, as you can tell, and um, I worked on four heads all together. This is the first one I actually wanted to show in this video because it was pretty basic. Now this head, we're adding some of that Crayola Model Magic. And you want to have a little pot next to you with water in it. So you can dip your finger in that and work it into your clay and mix it a little stickier so it'll stick to your pumpkin and easier to mold. It's kind of like molding a marshmallow. If you've ever molded with marshmallows, I'm, I don't know if I have, but <laughs> it's like that. This is a great diet trick because you are not eating this stuff and it's like, you know, playing with your food. If you ever want to play with your food and not eat it. Now, see, I stuck that piece on there and it stays. It's it's going to be on there. This is really nice stuff to work with. I never really worked with this um, medium before, but I really enjoyed working with it. I made a lot of neat stuff with this Model Magic. You can find it at Dollar General in little one pack, $1 packages. Or this package was a little bigger from Walmart and it was about $5. I'm just adding this around the eyes where I was wanting the clay and um, then you can use your sculpting tool to press down the edges, make little lines and details in that and give it some personality. I didn't, I didn't use any on the mouth but I do sculpt the nose next. It's really easy to work with. Work it with your, your hands, your fingernails. You can take your X-Acto blade and I'll cut off the pieces if they're too big like that got a little smushy there. So I wanted to remove that smushiness. But the nice thing about this medium, this Model Magic, is it blends in really nice to the project that you're sticking it on there. So you don't have too big of a a mold line. The tools that I have are from various craft stores. Some were given to me like that. That red one you see me using was gifted to me. And I use that quite often. There's the, my inspiration head. The first one I made with this model magic. That's how I knew it would work. <laughs> and I was like, I have to share this project. This was fun. So I ended up making four or five or six heads. But I'll show you these two, and in the next video we'll show you a couple more. A little different style. Now when you're finished sculpting this, you're going to want to let it dry. I let it dry overnight. If you use bigger pieces, sometimes it needs longer to dry. So just um, that's why I worked on so many heads at once because I was in various stages of letting them dry. You want to smush it on there with your hand. I added a little water so you can smush that right on there. And I did not need glue that is on there. I used my fingers to um, smooth down the edges. And I used my little tools again to create some bridges, some detail lines the nostrils and give it a little more character. Now the neat thing about this is you can you can make that nose any shape. I just kind of used a um, ball of clay and then rolled it into like a snake-like shape. Kind of a snake-like shape. Do a little pinching, a little smushing, and this stuff is so fun to work with. I hope that you try it. 
What a great medium and it keeps it so nice and light too. So when you finish your head and you want to put that on a doll, it's not just going to topple over because it's heavy. I usually use polymer clays and that gets really heavy. This is great stuff. And it takes paint really well too. Just make sure it's dry and you'll, you'll be able to tell when it's dry. It won't be as smushy anymore. It'll feel like a deflated marshmallow, honestly. You leave the package open and do not leave the package open on this stuff because you'll ruin the whole batch. Put it in a Ziploc bag or something. Save it. You can get this in all different colors too and they all take paint really well. All right, now I'm going to work on the stem. You can turn this into a little hat or you can add your little flowers or berries or whatever you want to the top but with this I'm gonna try to make it look like a stem like I did the first pumpkin I made so I um, made a ball smashed into a disc shape and then pinched the edges so it was like a star that reminds me of pumpkins is a star shape because the top where it attaches to the stalk is kind of a star shape and then I'm working on the the viney stem part and I flattened that on the table so it'll stick right on there. And then you just smush it together and that will not come off. That is one solid piece and I didn't use any glue or anything. Really happy with the way that worked. Add some details. You can use a fork. You can use a, <laughs> I use this little tool here, but you can use your fingers. You can use toothpick. Whatever works for you. If you're going to do some sculpting, it's nice to have a couple tools at your disposal because you can use them for painting also. I'm making little dots, like the end of this tool, I can make teeny tiny dots. It's a really nice tool. All right, now I'm going into paint mode. I'm gonna paint the stalk and the rest of the features with browns. The browns I'm using are from Apple Barrel. That dark brown is actually called um, Burnt Umber. Oh, that, I'm sorry, that's a black that I'm using for the inside of the eyes, like the first pumpkin. It's pretty much taking that first pumpkin and adding to it if you want to. You don't have to. And then the second brown I'm using is called Nutmeg. And I use that on the nose and the eye features. I just love the way this looks in that mouth. It just looks so... <laughs> I don't know. Gnarly. It's gnarly. Paint my stem a dark brown and I'll go over that later with a lighter brown. To give it some detail. Kind of like a dry brushing. I don't know if I get that on camera or not. These features I'm using just the light colored brown because that pumpkin isn't very dark. So I don't need a very dark color. But I want a, the darkest base color I would use is this brown here. And then I'll move up to the brighter oranges, brighter, lighter oranges, which unfortunately I lost the video for. That did not video. My storage was full and it did not video. So uh, it's a learning curve for me, but I'm getting it figured out. My husband and I are really working hard to <laughs> figure out where to put stuff, lighting and the sound, all the details. So what I did for you since I lost that video was I grabbed a different pumpkin and I sculpted a quick nose on it. So I could try to, try to show you how I got that to blend into the pumpkin with some oranges. Now you gotta let that dry. And then you can add your next layer of paint, which is not on this video. Unfortunately. So here's our stand in pumpkin and I'm using a darker orange here because that pumpkin is a darker orange color and those colors are uh, Liquitex acrylics. A 
and they're nice thick colors. That is actually a cadmium red light hue. And the other one is Liquitex, and it's a vivid red orange. So I'm using that and uh, mixing it with that burnt umber to get that dark color that I'm wanting to cover that up. So I did my base coat of brown like before, and then I'm using the, the darker orange and the darker brown mixed together to make that dark orange that you see there. And it's camouflaging pretty good. I'll go over that with a couple different uh, coats of lighter and darker paints to just kind of camouflage that on there. Now this did not dry completely because the nose was still wet when I painted it, which I don't recommend, but I wanted to make this video so you could try to see how I blended that in there. And um, therefore that paint <laughs> would not dry. It will dry, but just not as quickly as if it had been dry previously. So I'm wanting to, <laughs> I'm wanting to move forward, but as you can see, that paint is going to be wet for a while. You would add some highlights with a little bit lighter orange and some speckles. I used just a couple light shades uh, off white and a light yellow to get those speckles. And that's a little bit drier there, but. I was still uh, impatient, impatiently waiting because I wanted to plug that into this video. Get this video ready for you. <laughs> what a silly face. I, uh, yeah, I made all those other pieces while I was waiting for that paint to dry. I cut out the mouth, I painted it yellow, and it was fun. It was a fun uh, little head to make, so maybe I'll pop that on a body in the next video too. I'm not really sure yet. Thank you, stand in head. Let us see. Hello, thanks for watching. I have another video coming up that's the next two heads. I ran out of room, the video got too long. So the first two heads I did were this one here. And this is just where I carved it out. And I added a couple little leaves to the top. We can put this on a shelf somewhere, make a whole bunch of them together. Or you can put this on a doll's body that has clothes if you want. And we'll work on that in a future video too where I'll be putting some of these heads on dolls and making clothes for them. And then this is the second head that we did in this video. And I didn't really get to show it very well um, at the end of the video, but I also took the paint down on these uh, little divots here and I just elongated it so it looks a little more creepy than the other doll I did. There's that one and that one. And this one has the clay on it. It's really easy to do. And uh, it's on a Barbie body right now, but again, I'm going to be putting clothes on that eventually. So that is it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, uh, Go watch the second one. I have more heads for you. More heads, more pumpkin headed people. All right, bye. Hello, uh, I hope you enjoyed making pumpkin headed dolls with me. A few you know, gained any ex experience or... Eh. Hello! I just goofed up. <laughs>